Hello, welcome to number seven, Ministries Christian Outreach. Today's short sermon is called Spiritual Vampires. God desperately wants the body of Christ, those that are covered under the blood of Christ, those that are born again, those that are Holy Ghost filled, those that are walking, talking, living, and breathing for Jesus Christ. He wants to teach us how to talk. He wants to teach us how to communicate. He wants to teach us when to communicate and when not to communicate. The devil knows that as children of God, we only have so much energy that God gives us each day. When you wake up, you don't have unlimited amount of energy. There are limitations to us in the natural. And so that is where Satan has room for victory, as if he can get us in the natural. If we're in the spiritual, the spirit never gets tired, but our flesh does. So that is what the devil is going to attack, is our flesh. And he wants to take us out of the spirit of God and bring us into the flesh and one of the ways that he does that is through spiritual vampirism if you go onto the website of the Church of Satan cult on their front page it says spiritual vampire and I want to tell you why do you believe that that's on their front page if you had a website and you were going to advertise something on the front page would it be the least important or the most important Obviously, the answer is it's going to be the most important thing. You want everyone to see it. And the devil wants everyone to see one of his most important things. And that's training an army of spiritual vampires. There are wolves and sheep clothing that go out into the midst of the church and try to divide and conquer. And one of the ways that he does it is through spiritual vampires. And I want to tell you exactly what a spiritual vampire is. A spiritual a spiritual vampire is someone who is aware or unaware of what they're doing. And what they want to do is engage in vain conversation. They want to argue with you. They want to ultimately take your energy, take your joy, and take your peace. And a Christian who's not being led by the Spirit of God will fall victim and pray to the spiritual vampire. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The Bible verse that I would like to read is Matthew chapter 15, verse 23. But he answered her, not a word. And I really want to emphasize on that. Jesus Christ answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. The next Bible verse is Matthew 26, verse 63. But Jesus held his peace. I want to emphasize on that too. Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Look at this. Jesus held his peace, and he answered not a word. As a Christian, as a follower of Jesus Christ, you do not need to know all the answers of all the questions. You do not need to know everything, and you don't need to have all the answers. As a pastor, I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything. What I do know is who knows everything. And as a Christian, it's our goal, it's our duty to point those who come to us to Jesus Christ. If you're drawing them unto yourself, then you're sinning against God. And Satan is fully aware of this. And what he's going to try to do is get us to have all the answers or to deceive us into thinking that we can have all the answers. He's going to provoke us. He's going to say things that cause Christians to become insecure about their faith. See, if a Christian has complete security about who they are in Christ, if a Christian has complete security about what they believe, then there is absolutely no room for the devil to come in and suck anything from them. And that's where God wants us to be, is completely secure in our faith, secure in who we are in Him. But the thing is, is that we don't have to have all the answers. And remember, that spirit of spiritual vampirism, it's alive today and it's taking place. And they're going to 
to come into your life and they're going to try to draw you in debates about religion. They're going to draw you in debates about doctrines, about Bible verses. And in the end, it's going to be unprofitable. In the end, it's not going to edify you. It's going to not going to edify them. And ultimately, those who are operating under the spiritual vampirism demon, they don't care whether they're right or wrong. They don't even care about what they're talking about. All they care about is attacking you. And remember, like I said, some may not even be aware of that of what they're doing. They might not even be aware that they're being used by a demon. Some people are spiritually blind and spiritually dead and just possessed by demons. And as a Christian, we need to be aware of what's taking place. We don't need to be caught up in our pride because we can start off in a conversation with good intentions. We can start off in a conversation with trying to win them to Jesus Christ. And in doing that, we can be lifted up in pride. But see, if God is not leading you into that conversation, then he's leading you out of it and you need to leave it. The next Bible verse that I would like to read is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Have you ever been at work and you started off in a conversation with someone about something that was innocent? And by the end of the conversation, Everyone was talking about fornication, adultery, they were talking about wicked things, but it started off innocent. See, that's not a coincidence. Those things happen on purpose. There are people that are going to be sent in your life by Satan, and they're going to start off in innocent conversations, but their goal is to get you corrupted. Their goal is to get you tempted. Their goal is to plant seeds of doubt in your life. The next Bible verse that I want to read is Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under your feet and turn again and rend you, which means rip you. And they're going to rip you of your peace, rip you of your joy, rip you of your faith, if you allow them to. And see, I believe baby Christians are often victims of the spiritual vampires and the devil knows exactly what he's doing he's shrewd and he's wise in his own wickedness and what he's trying to do he knows our weaknesses sometimes more than we even know our own weaknesses that's why we have to devote ourselves to the word of god that's why we need to stay spiritually connected to God daily. If you find yourself waking up full of joy and waking up full of peace and love and then you communicate with someone all of a sudden you don't even know why you're angry, you're upset, you have no joy and you're just you have un uneasiness. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that's a coincidence? Or do you think that that was a spiritual attack? I want to tell you it's not a coincidence. There's a reason why that happened. The next Bible verse that I want to read is Proverbs chapter 26, verse 5. Now look at this. This looks like this would be a contradiction. But what I said before in another video, if it looks like a contradiction, that is a red flag in an area for growth and to be able to learn because God is not schizophrenic and he doesn't contradict himself. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 5. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 4, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou be like unto him. What does that mean? Because every situation is different. You don't do the same thing all the time or you're not being led by God. If you're being led by God, there's going to be a time where you're going to answer a fool according to his folly. There's going to be another time when you're being led by God when you're not going to answer a fool according to his folly. I do prison ministry. Let me throw this at you. If there's a guy in the jail and he's foaming at the mouth and he's seven foot ten and he's 500 pounds full of muscle with veins popping out of his neck and he's screaming and yelling, am I going to answer him according to his folly? No. I'm going to answer him in a soft way, in a very kind, loving way. That's not wise to answer him uh, uh, like a fool, the way that he's being foolish. No, that would not be the right scenario. However, if there's someone sitting in the congregation and they have their hands folded and they're talking very softly, 
there might be a time where you're going to answer a fool according to a folly. You have to use wisdom in the things that you do. I pray that this message takes seed inside of your heart. It grows root and it flourishes and produces a lot of fruit. And that is how you know if someone is being led by God or if someone is a spiritual vampire, if they are bearing the fruit of God. God bless you and have a wonderful day.